Hello, this is Dr. Oviedo. Today we are going to go over numerous cases of stomach pathology. The first slide is normal stomach acid secreting. This particular section is taken from the body of the stomach. I'm going to take a closer look right here. At this power, you can see from here to here is the gastric mucosa. This tissue right here is the muscularis mucosa. From here to here is the submucosa. This tissue from here to here is the muscularis propria. The serosa is extremely thin, but does of course cover the stomach down here. Let's take a closer look. At this power, you can see the cells in this upper region up here are foveolar cells. Foveolar cells secrete mucin. Below that, in this area down here, are the gastric glands. The gastric glands have parietal cells and chief cells. At this power, you can see the parietal cells have pink cytoplasm, like these cells right here. Parietal cells secrete acid and intrinsic factor. The blue cells are chief cells. You can see these cells here are chief cells. Chief cells secrete pepsinogen and gastric lipase. Lastly, I want to mention lamina propria. Lamina propria refers to tissue in between all the glands. For example, right here there is some lamina propria. Down here, the gastric glands take up most of the tissue. There is only a small amount of tissue in between the glands. In a normal stomach, you can't really see much lamina propria in between the glands. In pathologic states, it will sometimes be expanded. Let's go on to our next slide. This slide is normal stomach acid secreting taken from the body of the stomach. This is an endoscopic biopsy, so you pretty much can only see the mucosa. The other layers of the gastrointestinal tract, of course, will not be seen on an endoscopic biopsy. At this power, you can again see the foveolar cells up here and the glandular cells down here. The cell types are the same as in the previous biopsy. Let's go on to our next slide. The third slide is normal stomach non-acid secreting. This particular biopsy is taken from the antrum. Let's take a closer look. Because this biopsy is non-acid secreting, of course you will not have the parietal cells and the chief cells present. However, you can still see the foveolar cells up here. And down here, you do have glands. However, in the antrum, they're called pyloric glands. They secrete mucin. Pyloric glands also will have G cells, which secrete gastrin, and D cells, which secrete somatostatin. However, you cannot see the G cells or D cells in a routine biopsy. Let's go on to our next case. This is case four, which is chronic active gastritis with H. pylori organisms present. These are biopsies from the antrum. I'm going to take a closer look at this biopsy right here. At this power, you can see the foveolar cells up here and the pyloric glands down here. You can also see that the lamina propria is expanded you can easily see there is tissue in between the glands. Let's take a look at higher power. At this power, you can see the lamina propria, which is this tissue in between the glands, contains increased plasma cells and lymphocytes. This is the chronic portion of chronic active gastritis. You can see there are a few neutrophils in this gland right here. This is the active portion of chronic active gastritis. So the histologic diagnosis for this biopsy is chronic active gastritis. This case has two slides. Let's go on to the next slide. 
This is an MTB stain. This is a stain that will highlight H. pylori organisms. I'm going to take a closer look at the same piece of tissue that we looked at on the previous slide. At this power, there are a few organisms right here. These are H. pylori organisms. They are a little difficult to see. You will be able to see them better on the summary slides. So this, of course, is chronic active gastritis with H. pylori organisms present. Let's go on to our next case. The next case, you're going to have to copy and paste the link in order to see the slide. This is case 5, which is gastric adenocarcinoma intestinal type. At this power, you can see the gastric mucosa up here. You can also see the muscularis propria down here. This entire area is, of course, the tumor. I'm going to take a closer look right here. At this power, you can see this is completely abnormal. There are numerous highly atypical cells forming glands. These white spaces are all glands. Malignant cells producing glands is, of course, adenocarcinoma. So this is gastric adenocarcinoma intestinal type. Please be sure and read the accompanying slide review guide in order to answer questions about risk factors and pathogenesis of these cases. Let's go on to our next slide. This is case 6, gastric adenocarcinoma diffuse signet ring cell type. This particular slide is hard to orient, but there is a bit of mucosa down here. There's also obviously a large amount of muscularis here on the right. These darker tissues on the left are tumor, and this whitish tissue in the center portions also consist of tumor. I'm going to take a closer look at these central portions. At this power, you can see there are large amounts of mucin kind of dissecting through the tissues. At this power, of course, you can see the very abnormal malignant cells. This cell right here in the middle is what we call a signet ring. The nucleus is pushed to the side right here by this large droplet of mucin. This is the appearance of a signet ring cell, and therefore this is gastric adenocarcinoma diffuse signet ring cell type. Let's go on to our next case. For this next case, you're going to have to copy and paste the link in order to see the slide. This is case 7, which is a MALT lymphoma of the stomach. MALT stands for mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. At this power, you can see the mucosa up here at the top, and then there is the muscularis propria down here at the bottom. You can see the mucosa and submucosa have been massively expanded by a tumor. Let's take a closer look. At this power, you can see the tumor is composed of monomorphous lymphoid-like cells. This is the appearance of a malt lymphoma. In a real case, there would be a lot of ancillary studies, such as immunohistochemistry, flow cytometry, and molecular studies in order to establish that these are malt lymphoma cells. Let's go on to our next case. Case 8 is autoimmune gastritis. Please note this case is composed of two slides, one with early autoimmune gastritis and one with late autoimmune gastritis. This first slide is, of course, the early autoimmune gastritis. Let's take a closer look. At this power, you can see there is a large lymphoid aggregate right here, and there also seem to be quite a few lymphocytes among the glands. Let's take a closer look. At this power, you can see there are too many lymphocytes in the lamina propria. Here in the center, I've shown a few glands which are infiltrated by lymphocytes. This is, of course, autoimmune gastritis. Autoimmune gastritis is associated with autoantibodies against the hydrogen potassium ATPase pump and intrinsic factor. Let's go on to the next slide to see how this disease will develop over years. I'm going to take a closer look at this piece right here. 
This was taken from acid secreting mucosa and you can see it is much too thin and does not have the acid secreting glandular cells that you would normally see in acid secreting mucosa. You do still have the foveolar cells up here. Down here, let's take a closer look. These glands are just kind of immature. They don't really demonstrate well-developed acid secreting appearance. This is of course atrophic gastritis. In addition, this area right here, of course, has numerous goblet cells. There's a goblet cell right here, right here, right here, right here. This is, of course, intestinal metaplasia, which is associated with atrophic gastritis. This is a good time to review vitamin B12 absorption. However, for now, let's go on to our next case. This is case 9, which are stress ulcers or ICU ulcers. This case demonstrates the gastric body on the left, right here, and the antrum on the right. You can see these multiple black lesions are, of course, ulcers. These are stress ulcers or ICU ulcers, which are secondary to massive physiologic stress. They are not secondary to general life stressors. Another thing I want you to notice on the stomach is the appearance of the rugae right here on the lower left. These are relatively normal and I want you to remember what they look like for comparison in a later case. Let's go on to our next case. This is case 10, which is Menetrier disease. This particular case has two images associated with it. This first one is a gross photograph of the stomach. The rugae are massively thickened, which you should remember what the previous case looked like. This case is, of course, very abnormal, and it has massively thickened rugae. This is secondary to excessive TGF-alpha production. In Menetrier disease, you have excessive hyperplasia of the foveolar epithelium. Let's go on to the next slide to take a look at that. This is simply a photograph. You will not be able to magnify it. This is the second slide from the Menetrier disease case. You can see there is a massive hyperplasia of the foveolar epithelium. This is what gives the rugae that thickened appearance. Case 10 is Menetrier disease. Let's go on to the next case. This is case 11. Case 11 is zollinger ellison syndrome and has three separate images. The first image is a duodenal ulcer. The duodenal ulcer is, of course, right here in the middle of the picture. Let's do a systematic viewing of the image. Up here you have the stomach, and then down here is, of course, the duodenum. This punched out lesion in the middle is the ulcer. Let's go on to the next image for case 11. This image also demonstrates markedly thickened rugae due to hyperplasia of acid secreting mucosa. Remember, Zollinger Ellison has hyperplasia of acid secreting mucosa. Let's go on to the last image. This last slide is pancreas, which has a very large tumor here on the right. This is a neuroendocrine tumor or carcinoid tumor, which is the third part of Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Let's take a closer look at the tumor. At this power, you can see the tumor is composed of fairly monomorphous cells that have fairly uniform round nuclei with a salt and pepper chromatin appearance. You can see the salt and pepper appearance fairly well in this nucleus here that I'm circling. The cells are fairly uniform and have kind of a pale pink cytoplasm. Neuroendocrine tumors will also form trabeculae, which are these kind of long areas here and little gland-like structures which are here. In order to determine what type of hormone a neuroendocrine tumor is secreting, you have to do special studies such as immunohistochemistry on the tumor cells. Because this is Zollinger-Ellison syndrome, this particular neuroendocrine tumor is of course secreting gastrin, which causes the changes that you saw in the previous two images. So these three images together is what compose Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. I gave you an example of a carcinoid tumor in the pancreas secreting gastrin. However, you can also get Zollinger-Ellison with a carcinoid tumor of the duodenum. Please note neuroendocrine tumor and carcinoid tumor are the same thing. Let's go on to our next case. This is case 12, which is a carcinoid tumor of the stomach. Let's take a closer look at this one on the top right. At this power, you can see the gastric mucosa 
going around the tissue. The tumor is, of course, right here. Here again, you have a carcinoid tumor or neuroendocrine tumor similar in appearance to the one we just saw in the pancreas. You have a fairly uniform round nuclei with salt and pepper chromatin, and there is a fairly pale pink cytoplasm present. This particular view has some trabeculae here on the right, and there are small gland-like structures here on the left. So this is, of course, a carcinoid tumor of the stomach. Again, in order to find out what type of tumor this hormone is secreting, you need to do special studies. Let's go on to our next case. Case 13 is a gastrointestinal stromal tumor. You can see this is a fairly sharply demarcated tumor. I'm going to take a closer look right here. At this power, you can see this tumor is composed of spindled cells. The cell of origin for gastrointestinal stromal tumor is the interstitial cell of Cajal, or, which is also the same as the pacemaker cell of the muscularis propria. Gastrointestinal stromal tumor will have a kit mutation in about 75 to 80 percent of all tumors. About 8 percent will have a PDJFRA mutation. Other genes are involved in tumor progression. GISTs with PDGFRA are overrepresented in the stomach. Imatinib, which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, is a potential therapy in some patients that have the KIT or PDGFRA mutation and cannot have a complete surgical resection. Okay, let's go on to our summary slide. Cases 1 and 2 are normal stomach from the body of the stomach acid secreting. Here on the left, I have the full thickness gastric body. This is the gastric mucosa, which is acid secreting. Here is the muscularis mucosa. There is the submucosa. Here is the muscularis propria. Down here is the serosa, which is covered with mesothelium and is very thin. Here on the right, I've shown the endoscopic biopsy from the gastric body. We'll take a closer look at that on the next slide. Here on the left is the acid secreting mucosa. Here are the gastric pits, and here are the gastric glands. The gastric pits are composed of foveolar cells, which can be clear or pale pink and are mucus secreting. The gastric glands are composed of parietal cells, which are pink and secrete acid and intrinsic factor. The chief cells are blue, and secrete pepsinogen and gastric lipase. The lamina propria is the tissue in between the pits and the glands. There's not much lamina propria in a normal stomach. Here on the right, I've shown a drawing from Harrison's Internal Medicine so you can review the physiology of these different types of cells. Case three is normal stomach from the antrum, which is non-acid secreting. The cardia is also non-acid secreting, but we will only be reviewing a biopsy of the antrum. Here is our tissue. These are the foveolar cells, which are clear or pale pink and mucus secreting. Here are the pyloric glands, which also secrete mucus. In the antrum, these have G cells, which secrete gastrin, and D cells, which secrete somatostatin. The G cells and D cells cannot be seen on routine sections. Case 4 is composed of two slides. It is chronic active gastritis with H. pylori organisms present. Here is the biopsy showing chronic active gastritis. Here is the chronic portion which is composed of an expanded lamina propria, which is the space in between the glands and has increased plasma cells. Here is the active portion, which demonstrates neutrophils in a gland. This is the histology of chronic active gastritis. Let's go on to the second slide that corresponds to this case. This is an MTB stain. Here you can see the organisms are circled. They are kind of faint, but they have kind of an elongated S shape. Here on the right, I have a drawing which demonstrates that the organisms are present in the overlying mucus. However, you do get an inflammatory response in the underlying tissue. Let's go on to our next case. 
Case 5 is gastric adenocarcinoma intestinal type. Here is our whole mount. Here on the right you can see the malignant cells are producing glands, which are those kind of empty white spaces. So this of course is gastric adenocarcinoma intestinal type. Case 6 is gastric adenocarcinoma diffuse signet ring cell type. Here on the left you can see the tumor extensively invades into the stomach wall. This is in comparison to the intestinal type which is more likely to form a single mass. Here in the middle I have a mid power which shows a cluster of the signet rings in pools of mucin. On the far right I have a high power of the signet ring which is of course composed of the nucleus pushed to the side along with a large droplet of mucin which gives this signet ring appearance. Case 7 is a malt lymphoma of the stomach. Malt stands for mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. Here is our whole mount. You can see the mucosa is expanded by the malignant lymphoid cells. Here I have a high power which demonstrates monomorphous population of lymphoid cells consistent with a malt lymphoma. Please note that this diagnosis is generally confirmed with special studies such as immunohistochemistry, flow cytometry, and PCR. Case 8 is autoimmune gastritis and is composed of two slides, an early slide and a late slide. Autoimmune gastritis demonstrates loss of parietal cells which secrete acid and intrinsic factor. Here is the early slide. You can see there is lymphoid infiltration of the mucosa. On the bottom panel the lymphocytes are infiltrating the oxyntic glands. Oxyntic is another word for acid secreting. Here on the right I have a late phase of autoimmune gastritis. You can see at higher power the mucosa is atrophic. There are no oxyntic glands present. Here on the far right I've shown intestinal metaplasia with goblet cells which is associated with atrophic gastritis. Case 9 is stress ulcers which is the same as ICU ulcers. This is a gross picture which demonstrates the gastric body on the left and the antrum on the right. Those dark lesions are of course the ulcers. Remember stress ulcers are due to massive physiologic stress such as you would see in an intensive care unit. They are not due to life stressors. Case 10 is Menetrier disease. Here we have the abnormal thickened rugae due to excessive TGF alpha production. The clinical symptoms of Menetrier disease are protein losing enteropathy which causes a hypoproteinemia. Here I have an image demonstrating the markedly thickened foveolar epithelium. You can see this when you compare it to the normal body. I have a normal body down here which you can see the foveolar epithelium is quite narrow compared to the image on the top. Case 11 is Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Here we have our duodenal ulcer the stomach with thickened rugae. Remember here in Zollinger Ellison this is due to hyperplastic acid secreting mucosa. And here on the right is the carcinoid tumor which is secreting gastrin and causing the two problems on the left and middle panel. This particular example I gave you is a carcinoid tumor of the pancreas. However you can also have a carcinoid tumor in the duodenum cause the lesion on the left and in the middle. This is of course Zollinger Ellison syndrome. Case 12 is a carcinoid tumor of the stomach. I'm sure you know this is the exact same thing as neuroendocrine tumor of the stomach. Here we have our slide and here we have a high power on the right which demonstrates the uniformly round nuclei with salt and pepper chromatin, moderate amounts of pink cytoplasm and these cells form glands and trabeculae. Please note that special studies are needed in order to see what type of hormone this tumor is secreting. Case 13 is a gastrointestinal stromal tumor. Here is our slide. On high power you can see that this tumor is composed of spindle shaped tumor cells. 
Immunohistochemistry for this tumor will be positive for KIT. This is not shown here. The cell of origin for gastrointestinal stromal tumor is the interstitial cell of Cajal, which is the pacemaker cell of the muscularis propria. Approximately 75 to 80 percent of all gastrointestinal stromal tumors have KIT mutations. Approximately 8 percent of all gastrointestinal stromal tumors have PDGFRA mutations. Other genes are involved in tumor progression. GIST with PDGFRA mutations are overrepresented in the stomach. Imatinib, which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, is a potential therapy in patients who have KIT or PDGFRA mutations and cannot have complete surgical resections. Okay, that's it.